All right, so here I am on R1. Let's go through the commands that we just talked about. So I'll go to global config mode and I'm going to type in the command logging console. That helps me log my messages to the local device, which is really good, which means when I make changes, I can see the different messages. So let me give you an example. If I type in interface loopback 100, watch what's going to happen. There you go. A log message came up. So let me quickly give you a walkthrough of what that means. It's also called a syslog message format. The first thing that you see here is the timestamp. So this whole thing to the left, to the very left is the timestamp. Then right next to that is called a facility. This line proto is the facility. This is the service on this device that generated this log. Number five is the severity level that we just talked about. Right next to that is a mnemonic. So this up down is a mnemonic that shows what's really going on. And finally, the last piece here to the very right of our device is the description of what actually happened. So in this case, line protocol and interface loopback 100 changed state to up. And that's exactly what we did. We created this interface and it came up. Now let's jump back on CLI and keep going through a couple of additional commands. Now let's look at logging monitor. So if you remember, this is to allow people that may remotely connect to this device via Telnet or SSH to be able to view logs, okay? So that's important. Another thing you wanna do is, let me give you an example. If I were to go all the way back and type in show logging and hit enter, Look, I got nothing, okay? All it's showing me is that syslog logging is enabled, console logging is enabled, and level debugging means this is level seven, which means you're gonna be able to see all the levels zero through seven, because that's the level we chose. It also shows we have monitor logging configured, but you see it says buffer logging is disabled. So we do not have buffer logging. So what does that mean? Meaning on this device, we do not have historical data. All you're seeing is the logging messages on the console. But when I disconnect from the console, these messages are gonna disappear. So that's not good, right? What we should do is go to global config mode and type in logging buffered. And what that will do is if I were to go back to interface loopback 100, for example, and type in a command shutdown and give it a second and then type in the command no shutdown and then go all the way back to the exact privilege mode. You see a couple of things happen here. We had a link that went down and then we had the low link uh, line protocol that went down and then we had link eventually come up and we also had the line protocol come up. If I were to do show logging now, watch what you will be able to see. You see, now after I enabled buffer logging, now the events are being captured in the RAM on my device. And as long as my device stays up, I'm gonna have access to these logs. But if my device reboots for some reason, all of these logs are gonna go away. Now that's not a good thing, especially from network visibility and troubleshooting standpoint. You want to have access to historical logs so you can always go back in time and see what's going on. And as a matter of fact, some businesses are regulated businesses and if they're part of a government entity, they might be mandated by law to keep logs stored on a server somewhere. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go back to the global configuration mode and we'll type in logging host. And then we can either type in the host name, URL, or the IP address. Let's just say the logging host is 
10.10.10.10. And what this will do is any type of logging message that's being generated locally on our device, not only we're going to be able to see it on our console and also in the buffer, but that message will also be sent to the logging server where it can be stored indefinitely. Now let's enable sequence numbers and let's also enable timestamps. All right, we'll do copy running config to start up config because we made a bunch of changes so far. And you see what happened here? Just because of the fact that I came back from configuration, that generated a sys message, okay? And it says configured from console by console, which means I'm on a console port and I configured something on the console. And it says that logging host has been configured and start stop has been initiated. Uh, so the events can be sent to this particular syslog server. Now, here's what's interesting. You see, I enabled sequence numbers and timestamps. Pay attention here. So check this out, guys. This right here is our sequence number, 42. The next sequence number that was generated was sequence number 43. And right next to it is the timestamp. So this is really, really cool because now we're adding more intelligence to our logs. And by keeping the sequence numbers along with the timestamps, now we can do event correlation across a number of devices. If there's a security incident that happened or something went down, we can correlate all the logs and figure out what exactly happened and when. And that is syslog for you. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.